Greetings viewers, and welcome to my first editing tutorial. Today I will demonstrate how to make spirals or helices using the Cube 2 engine. In this tutorial I will assume that you have already mastered all the basic editing functions. So I will not review them here, but I might review them in a separate video. We'll just have to wait and see. Alright, let's get right to it. We know that a helix has several basic properties. Um, if looked from above, it appears to be a circle, and if looked from, from the side, you would see that the helix is always parallel to itself. And these are the main properties we want to emulate. So in the beginning here, you have seen me uh, making a round cylinder to serve as the base for the helix. And then I lifted up all the different cube sections um, to make a very rough outline of a helix. And it is a bit misleading, actually, because the helix will end up being two cube units taller than what you start with. And so here I begin adding the slope to the helix. Now in a helix the slope must be constant along its entire length. And for this helix I chose a slope of one half. And so here you can see me applying it to half the helix. I couldn't uh, preserve the other half because that would make the video too long. Alright, what have we here? Right, next I decide to copy and paste my helix. It's always a good idea to copy and paste your work once you complete um, a, a phase of your project because that way it makes going back and fixing any mistakes you make a lot easier and it also makes it a lot easier to restart. Alright, and so here I start adding the slope to the bottom of the helix. You may have noticed earlier that there were some artifacts present in the structure, but we will fix them after we give the helix thickness and slope. And so we're doing that from the bottom at this time. So I flatten the cube using F plus scroll, and then I, well, I control Z to undo erasing the cube, and then I simply use Q or mill mouse plus scroll to shape the cubes, like you see me do right there. So I flatten using F plus scroll, and then I use middle mouse button to give it the slope. And some cubes have to be deleted, and this is where the extra kite height comes from. The most important thing is to keep a uniform slope on both the top and the bottom of the helix. Everything else is secondary to that. Next we will begin working on the artifacts that you see here. And here you see me uh, mask that artifact by manipulating cubes. And so Sometimes you have to raise cubes, at other times you'll have to lower them because the cube underneath um, cannot be raised further. And you would want to repeat this process for both the top and the bottom. And the most important thing is just making it look good. Even though at times, like I do here, you have to introduce a slightly different slope to the helix. And after watching these clips five times over, I can probably think of a way to avoid having to do that, but I'm not going to go back and refilm the entire video. But I am aware of these problems. And if you have any other suggestions on things I could do better, feel free to make comments. I would rather make a better helix than not. And so in the next step, um, I'm just showing here that we want to make the inside of the slope inside of the helix curved as well as the outside. And so here I choose to make it half a cube thick. Well, just about half a cube thick. And then I apply that to the interior of the helix. And you may choose to do this out of order. I do not think that it's really important, but for me personally, this order seems to be the simplest and the most logical. And so here I duplicate the single helix 
and we see here that we're actually missing a piece. So we need to create it and shape it and add it back, which I do here. And so afterwards, we can safely delete the copied portion of the helix and be left with a complete single wave, you could say. And you can reproduce this helix as many times as you like, make it as long as you want, and it'll look completely uniform throughout, like you see here. Alright, and that's it for this editing tutorial. I hope you had a learning experience watching this, and please don't be too critical in the comments. This was, after all, my first video and commentary, and hopefully I'll be able to put together a few more editing tutorials in the next week or so. But that's it for now. Goodbye.